This is a special one-hour edition of WLOX News at 6. Coastal Crisis. Mom, this is sad because that shell game is I know. No matter what the age, the impact on our birds and other wildlife and marine life is so hard for us to see, and we have received a lot of questions about this. If you couldn't hear what the little boy he said, and he's not even from here, they were there visiting Ship Island, and he said, Mom, this is sad, that bird is sick, and the mother turned his face away from it. And that, to me, goes straight to the heart of how sad and, and tragic all of this is. Um, Congressman, I asked you before about what the President has said. Has he told you, has he made a true commitment? Because I have heard some, maybe they're silly rumors, that as Rahm Emanuel said, you should never waste a good crisis. Is this a chance for him to say that fossil fuels really are a bad thing? Well, I think he already has tried that. And, you know, he is pushing the cap and trade legislation, and I would much prefer if he spent his time marshalling the nation's resources to address this problem and not trying to pass a bill that I voted against a year ago. To wildlife, since we saw that little boy, and it's, I think that's what's even more upsetting, the, the fishing. Let's ask Dr. Asper. You said it won't take 20 years for this to get out of our system, but as for a five-year-old going fishing, I mean, will we ever be able to fish again? Do you ever think it will be the way it has been in the past? Well, obviously, the first thing that has to happen is we've got to cap the well. We've got to stop the flow. And once that's happened, which uh, we're promised it's going to happen in just a few days here, once that's happened, we'll be able to assess how much oil is out there, where it's going, and then we can start to talk about what the impacts are going to be. And the uh, problem with the oil up in the marshes is that the bacteria have a hard time getting to it. If the, if the oil is in really small droplets like that dispersion is, is uh, supposed to create, then the bacteria can get all around it and they can, they can uh, sort of team up and, and decompose the oil. In the marshes, it's in these thick layers and in these, these tar balls and these patties, and the bacteria just can't get to it very well. You take that and then you further bury it in the mud and you wrap it in among the, the uh, grass in the marsh, and the bacteria just cannot access it. So the more you pack it away in these out-of-the-way places and the thicker it is, the worse, the, it, the is. worse it is. Okay, Denise obviously cares about wildlife. And she's asked uh, this question, has there been and will there be continuing a media blackout to some extent? We're not really seeing any new information on wildlife counts and non-uniform personnel are blocking access, she says, to public piers there in Long Beach and saying only boat owners are allowed now. Also, why can't we get the real phone numbers to volunteer for wildlife rescue and cleanup? Nobody seems to know who is responsible, she says, for various aspects, and the numbers simply don't work. Is that one thing, Commander, that the Coast Guard oversees? Or, I mean, we've tried to gather numbers, but she's right. It is kind of hard to know what to do when you see an injured bird. You're right, and, and the, we've, we've had ex ex excessive, a, a, a huge amount of people that have reached out in the community to make sure all of the information, all the hotlines, if you will, numbers are distributed through the EOCs and into the community to make sure that any resident can find the number to call. Uh, this past weekend, I actually did a uh, benchmarking, if you will, of that process because we heard of a report, and I think it was an article in the newspaper that talked about a pelican that was on Ship Island. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there's a whole series of steps that were done to try to capture the wildlife. Um, different things that restricted the access to, you know, a vessel that was supposed to moor Ship Island and, and a whole level of, of, of procedures, if you will. But to, to capture the, the wildlife, there are procedures, there are volunteers. Um, it's part of the unified command. We work directly with the Department of Interior. So what uh, do US people do services. if someone sees one? What, what do they do? First of all, I would, I would verify whether or not it's sick or dead. Um, if, it's, if it's not moving, I wouldn't touch it because you don't know what else might be on it. You might ha cause more harm than help. Um, I would also get a number to call a local 911 who has access to the EOCs who could call into the wildlife okay, number. Okay, so call 911. That's correct. And there are also teams here in Mississippi that are here from the Unified Command if we have incident command post and mobile that can dis be dispatched to go recover that animal. Now, that day that the pelican that you're talking about, I believe it was when Steve Phillips, our reporter, went out to Ship Island. He saw some dying birds, some dead birds, that sad pelican that that little boy saw. And the thing that upset him the most is there was not a cleanup person in sight, not a skimmer, not a person in a suit, nobody. But that would also tell you, if you saw the weather conditions that day in a sea state, it made it really difficult to get to the island, if you will, to, for these smaller boats that would recover. The other thing you have to look at is the requirements for that particular boat that can tie up a Ship Island. Do they allow wildlife on their boat? There's a series of events that have to, you have to make sure you don't contaminate someone else, whether that's someone else can get sick if you take this animal in there. So there's a lot of other factors that went into it, and it, 
the article, it was a serious article, and in, 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 in the wildlife, it was an injured bird. I mean, it was, it was a sad event. However, the response was reported, the process did work, the people did go out to try to recover it. The bird actually ran away from them, and they had to wait for it to come back in to get it. So there, there were a whole bunch of steps that were taken, and it took a little while, but they eventually got it. And uh, They did get them? They did. Okay. And you mentioned contamination. I got a call in the newsroom the other day. Um, a man, I'm going to send this to Donald Langham because it's in Jackson County. He was saying he went to a car wash in Van Cleve, and there was a man there with two boats, and he was rinsing off oil from his boats at a car wash, and that goes right back into the water supply, doesn't it? It goes into the drainage system. Yes, it does. And so, I mean, have you had any reports? I actually told them to call the police in Jackson County and report it. I mean, have you had any reports about contamination and boats being brought in that shouldn't have been? Uh, that's the first I'd heard of that. We have had some reports of some boats coming back into the harbors uh, that had some oil on them that were not decontaminated. That's one of the things that's being addressed at this point is setting up decontamination stations for recreational boats in the counties. Have they been set up yet? Not at this point. So that's one more thing that needs to be added to the list. It does, and that's a very important one because there's no way to, uh, to address that issue and, and keep track of it. It seems people can go out in their boats, launch from any boat launch, go out into the Gulf, come back in at any boat launch anywhere in the county, and to trailer their boat home and they're spreading the product. Absolutely. All right, we need to take a quick break already, but when we come back, we're going to talk about some rumors, a lot of good questions about some rumors that you've heard. We're going to clear that up in our special one-hour edition of 6 o'clock News Postal Crisis.